Welcome to The Life of Hair, my name's James Atkinson and straight off the bat, if you're going to comment on this video, please be kind to Amy because she's been my model before and lots of people said she's got resting beep face or looks miserable. So please be kind in the comment section. This is a very, very versatile cut and it's one of those haircuts for those clients who say they want to keep the length but they want more shape. It is a cracking shape if you've got thin hair, but it can be adapted to thick hair as well. So if you enjoy this tutorial, then please do me the big favor of hitting that thumbs up button. It really helps the videos. It's the equivalent to sharing it with your friends. And I'll see you again in another episode of The Life of Hair. So definitely myself, she's so <laughs> you laugh in the beginning of the video. <laughs> okay, first things first, with Amy's haircut, we take a center parting straight down the middle of the head, and then we're gonna subdivide the hair from the highest point of the head down towards the back of the ear, at the point where the hairline drops away into the nape area. This is really, really important to remember. Now, with Amy's hair, she's got an existing fringe, but doesn't want to make it any shorter. And obviously, longer fringes are very fashionable at the moment, and quite a few people have asked me, how do you go about doing this particular haircut, which I've kind of covered in a different way before on a longer fringe shape. So hopefully that will help you guys understand how this works. Now, if we just look at the hair that we're going to be cutting off in this particular shot, you can see at the moment, we're going to elevate the hair straight up. Now, I'm not going to cut it like this, but you can see we're going to remove a fair amount of hair because we're using the fringe as our guide. Now, once we've established how much hair we're going to be cutting off, it's then less scary once we actually get into the technique. So that's always a good place to start. We're going to take a vertical section from the fringe area down towards the top of the ear or slightly behind the top of the ear, dependent on the client's hair. You can see Amy's hair is quite thin, but we can use the guide from the fringe as our starting point and pull the hair straight forward out from the head. Tension wants to be nice and even, but you don't want to pull on the hair too hard because around the hairline, at the front, the hair is quite stretchy and also the skin around the hairline can stretch with it and that can make your hair cut a little bit wonky accidentally. Elevate the section. In some of the videos that I've done with this particular haircut, we've twisted and elevated the hair to horizontal. But in this particular instance, we're actually gonna carry on pulling the hair straight out from the head shape, following that guide length from the fringe. And then we're gonna create a diagonal line that travels from the fringe down towards the hair that is behind the ear on the head. And now that hair usually lives kind of on the shoulder. So there's gonna be a nice diagonal shape traveling down towards the hairline at the back. And this is called graduation. Whenever you cut something from long to short, this is graduation. So I've had a few comments where people were saying, well, this is not graduation, etc., etc." It definitely is graduation. Anytime you cut the hair from long to short or short to long, it's graduation. Now, in this particular instance, this is called long graduation because it's around the face, but obviously there are other forms of graduation that we do on shorter hairstyles like bobs, etc. But don't be confused, it is just one technique. So the one thing that we do need to mention in this particular instance is that, and you will have seen me pointing out as we're cutting Amy's hair here, Elevation is important in this particular technique. We don't want to hold the sections down too much, too low, as we cut each subsequent section as we travel further towards the back of the head. The main reason for that is that we can create a very heavy transition front to back. But remember, when we're over directing from the back to the front, or in any direction, we're pulling the hair, the hair is going to graduate as well. So it's going to go from short to long. Now I'm just using a slightly diagonal finger angle here and that's just going to protect a little bit more of the length when it comes to blending this into the existing length because one of the main things Amy didn't want to do was lose any of the length in her hair and she didn't want to lose any of the thickness in the perimeter on the back but she did want more shape and she did want more movement. Now at the end of this video I'm going to link to another video where I show you how I blow dried it but in, for all intensive purposes, Amy wears her hair in two ways, blow dry flicky, or she does it so it's natural. You're gonna see the natural version at the end of this video, but like I say, if you wanna see how we went on to blow dry and how you can blow dry this to create some nice and 70s inspired looks, which I really like, then make sure you go and check that video out. So again, we're gonna do exactly the same thing here on this opposite side. We're gonna create that diagonal line that travels from the face down towards the back hairline. 
each section is taken subsequently from the fringe length. So we've always got a very visual guide as to where we're traveling from and to. Make sure you can clearly see your guide on each of your sections. Pull the hair out from the head shape. We're not twisting and elevating, but we are angling our fingers slightly away from the back hairline as we get to the very last section, if you will, around the ear. Now, this haircut can be done on straight hair, and that's a question I've also been asked quite some time. It works perfectly well, straight, thick, thin, wavy, curly. It works brilliantly on every hair type. You do have to make some adaptations, especially on thicker hair. Um, you might need to do a little bit more texturizing to make it a little bit more lived in. Uh, and I have several clients who have very, very straight hair that we do this to them and it works brilliantly. So straight hair is a big yes, curly hair is a big yes, and wavy hair is a big yes. So it's a cracker to have in the toolkit and it works really, really well on so many different clients. So as you can see now, a little hard to see from this angle, but that's the only angle I've got. We've got that length diagonal down from the fringe towards what you see bunching up on the shoulders, which is the hair that lives in the back. The little dogs are in the background there. We sometimes have our uh, salon dogs in. They're Amy's dogs, and um, they are very sweet indeed. So what we're gonna do is connect in from the front to the back now. Now, this is gonna be very, very steep indeed, because obviously we want to retain as much of the weight and the length in the back as possible. So the more we angle our fingers up towards the ceiling and retain length and weight in the back, the less we're going to eat into the density of Amy's hair through the back hairline. So if you want to make sure that you're not gonna take any weight away from someone's hairline, but you want to connect the front from the back, then this is the way to do it. You don't have to connect the front and the back in this particular haircut. It is not imperative, but um, some of the hair on Amy's crown area is a little bit sensitized from coloring. And um, I think she uh, must roll around in her sleep a lot because she has got very, very mechanically damaged almost hair in the back. Um, but here's Amy's hair all done and dusted, worn naturally. Um, as I say, we did do a blow dry as well. So make sure you check that out if you want to see how that went down. You're gonna see a little snippet of that just in a second, but I really like these styles. I know they're hit and miss with people. You know, some people love them, some people hate them. I'm a big fan. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you again in the next one. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did and you wanna see how we blow dried it, then click this link here. If you wanna watch a haircut that's very similar on curly hair to give a really beautiful 70s inspired look, then click this link here. If you haven't subscribed yet, then click that link there. And if you wanna join the Life of Hair Academy and take your life of hair education one step further, click this link here. See you in the next one.